Hey guys, so um, I wanted to step back for a minute and just talk about the application that we're going to be using for this course, uh, one of the applications, which is Autodesk Maya. And um, you may be wondering why this program was chosen. And the reason is because it has pretty much been adopted as the industry standard 3D application for the visual effects and film industry, uh, the animation industry for feature film and otherwise and uh, even for some game studios. So uh, there was a competing application which is also owned by Autodesk, which is the company, called 3D Studio Max. And for a while, uh, probably prior to maybe 2005, 2004, uh, these two applications were pretty competitive. But in 2005, Autodesk purchased Maya from another company. And uh, ever since then, it has gained in popularity and uh, has become universally used. Um, so that's the reason we're using it. Um, besides that, it's just a really great application. So those two things go hand in hand, fortunately. Um, it's something that you can use to create an entire animated short with or you know, any kind of animated project you would have in mind. Um, you can do modeling with it. You can do animation, you can do surfacing or texturing, uh, rendering, <coughs> you can do all kinds of visual effects, you know, particle systems and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's really just a very powerful, very universal tool. Um, on top of that, it's also an open program, uh, so to speak. And what that means is that it is a program that is open to somebody who knows how to do scripting or programming or coding. Uh, the whole thing is built in such a way so that you can hack into it if you want. Uh, it's not really hacking, but you can go into the application and you can write your own tools. You can customize it to work a certain way. So uh, this is a very beneficial thing for a lot of studios that need to customize their workflow to their pipeline. Because every studio has a different way of working, no studio is going to be exactly identical to another one, although they may be similar. So that ability to customize is a very important thing. And uh, that's one of the reasons why 3D Studio Max sort of fell off the bandwagon. They had some sort of scripting thing as well, but it was sort of an afterthought. They didn't build the whole program up in such a way so that it could be customizable like they did with Maya. So, um, so that's... The, really the main reason why <coughs> we're using Maya. Uh, just to give you a little history, uh, Maya began uh, its development in about probably the 1996-97 era and the first release came out in 1998 and if you go to the uh, Wikipedia page for Maya, if you just go to wikipedia.org and do a search for Autodesk Maya you'll come up with this page and you can read more about it. Um, so originally it was developed by a company called Alias. Uh, at some point later on down the road it became Alias Wavefront, which was a merger between those two companies. Uh, you know, Walt Disney Feature Animation Studio helped develop it. Um, you know, you can read all about this. This is pretty interesting. In 2005, like I said, it got purchased by Autodesk, which is a much larger company. Autodesk is known for its uh, other 3D applications, most significantly uh, AutoCAD. So they're responsible for the CAD um, 3D modeling tools, which are used in the automotive industry most prominently. So whenever you see a bumper or you see a new car, you can be pretty sure at some point it went through development in CAD. So you can look up Autodesk on Wikipedia too if you want. Um, so yeah, I was just going over some of its benefits here. This is what I was talking about, how it's an open program. Maya Embedded Language, or MEL. It's kind of similar to JavaScript, uh, if anybody knows what that is. Um, the great thing about Autodesk owning this application now is that it does receive a lot more development work than it had before. Uh, not to say anything bad about Alias. Uh, really, they did a phenomenal job. But you have regular updates now that come out every single year. So in this class we'll be using uh, Maya 2012 or Maya 2013. For our purpose in this class, there really isn't a whole big difference, a whole lot of difference between 
2012 and 2013. <coughs> um, they do update the program with new things, but they don't always make it necessarily modeling specific. I'm sure there are probably one or two things that my 2013 has in the modeling department, but it won't be anything so significant that we won't be able to get by it. So really, if you have a copy of Maya 2011 even, or 2012 or 2013, you should be just fine for this class. And uh, that's basically a quick sum up of Maya. The other page I had open here is just a screenshot um, showing you what you can do. Uh, one of the great things about Maya 2011, 2012, and 2013 is that some of the uh, in-window graphics have gotten a lot better, a lot nicer. Um, but again, it it should be just fine for this class if we don't have any of that stuff. So, so without further ado, let's just open up the program and get started. <laughs> 